Hey guys, it's Finn. Some people have asked me to do a more complex project with Neat than Flappy Bird like Snake and this morning I sat down and implemented Snake and an eye to learn the game. Honestly, Snake wasn't any more complicated than Flappy Bird. In fact, I would say the game itself was harder to implement, but that's not important for this video. In the background you can see me coding the game and AI and stuff and it took me around 2 hours. I will not talk about the implementation of the game itself but more about the AI and problems I faced. So the first thing I had to think about is the input to the network. Usually when using any algorithm for this type of problem you got two options. Option A is to give all the information of the game to the, in this case, neural network. If you have any other type of AI um, you could just replace the neural network in that sentence with AI. So option A is to give all the information of the game to the AI. Here it would be all 100 squares if the grid is 10 by 10. This comes with a few problems. A the training would be w would take much longer because the network will grow in size and there are way more parameters to train. B the network cannot be used for any other grid size. So for example if you train it on a 10 by 10 grid you could not use it for an 11 by 11 grid although the problem is very similar so the solution to this uh, to this problem is to extract the information from the grid beforehand which has always the same size um, here I decided to use four variables the first three are information about the blocks in front to the right and to the left and it's either one if there is a an obstacle and zero if there's no obstacle the fourth value represents the angle to the target the advantage is obviously that the input data is way smaller and simpler to understand and to train on. Um, the problem on the other hand is that it has no information about the blocks around it except the block right in front to the left and to the right. Um, this leads to the snake running into some holes uh, or caves that it cannot get out of and there's no way it could learn to not do it simply because the information it has is not enough. I'll show you an example. Okay, this was rather quick, so let's uh, repeat this, but slowly now. You can see that it's trying to go for the apple, but instead of just taking it, it makes a, really, a turn to the right. So uh, at this point, he can only see to the left ahead and to the right, and because he has, he don't doesn't see any blocks there, he decides to go to the left, which is closer to the apple. Uh, next, he has to move uh, down because there would be a collision ahead. Of him. Uh, at this stage, he again doesn't see any um, collisions, like there's no block in front, no black block to the left, and no block to the right. So he decides to go to the right because this again would be closer to the apple. Uh, and he doesn't see that he is basically at a point where there's no, um, no way out. Luckily, this does not happen that often, but often enough that I never reach an average score over 25. Usually the best network for each iteration got about 50 to 60 points, but that's probably based on luck. Um, the average was usually somewhere between 20 and 25, depending on the training parameters. First, I had uh, my, sub my, my survivors rate um, too small and this led to new species basically just dying before they could evolve and I ended up with only one species which misses the point of need. I increased I increased the amount of clients, reduced the strength of the mutation and increased the amount of survivors and got a pretty good behavior of the species. A problem I ran into was a snake just running in circuits and my, my program would end in an infinite loop. To stop this I added a threshold of moves a client was allowed to take without eating an apple. Initially I set this value to 200 which was very large for a 10x10 board but it worked out. Although it happened that sometimes the snake would start circling around the apple um, and it would always get closer but it would take maybe 100 steps to actually reach the apple and I, I, um, I don't think that was really good training so I reduced the, str the threshold that we just talked about to 20 moves. Um, so basically the AI was only allowed to go 20 moves without eating the app or yeah eating the apple. Um, and this led to the um, snake going straight for the apple. Um, the good thing is I also tested the client, trained on a 10 by 10 grid on a 20 by 20 grid and the result looked promising as you can see in the background. The reason why the AI fails like that is because its view is too small. It can only see the block in front, the block to the left 
and the one to the right, and this information is simply not enough. If the view of the snake would be extended to perhaps an area of, let's say, 5x5 five five around the snake or 7x7, seven seven, this problem should be solved. This would require way more training, but it's definitely something you could try yourself. I hope you liked this short video and to see you in the next video.